Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, we're back on the 1950 Chevy truck cab here, the 3100. Uh, we are getting close to color and clear finally on the cab and the doors. So uh, I started masking already, but today I'm going to just show you some tips and tricks. What I do, uh, I've masked a lot of cars over my life, and I've kind of learned uh, the fastest, easiest way to get the job done. So that's what we're going to cover today in a real quick video. We got the back window, the windshield, and the door openings to mask. So let's just jump right in here and uh, check it out. Okay, uh, so. As you recall in the last video, I got the uh, rockers masked all the way around. So I finished that up over here on the, on the firewall. Got that all done. Little spots in the back where we undercoated here where the fenders go. That's all masked up. And you can see a lot of blue poking through there. So I did a lot of masking. There's, I, I can't believe how many holes are in the firewalls on these things. I still can't believe it. But you can see up in here, I've got all those masked up really tight. And over there... You can see that's the, the hole uh, where the plate goes. The louvers on the other side are exposed, so I, I sealed the louvers up on the inside of that. Then I sealed all the holes, and then I masked that opening too. Uh, I, I want to make sure no vapor gets inside here and ruins any of the work we've already done. And if you see over here, there's some plastic. You got some right here. So there's some holes up and around this dash. So I just took some plastic, and I just jammed it up inside there like a cork. Because when I'm painting this area, that could bleed through and get on this nice black paint job. So I want to make sure that I protect this the best I can. So I've got the, uh, you know, the hump uh, panel. It's not an in, so I got that masked. I've got the battery box masked off. All that stuff's masked off. So um, that's about where I'm at right now. We still need to mask this area. Now remember on the last video we sprayed the blue up inside there so we got that covered really nice but I just want to back mask this and just have this nice and smooth and not worry about any dirt blowing out of there so we're going to get that masked up real nice too. We're going to leave that uh, vent masked just like it is. It's perfectly fine like it is. We'll just spray more color over it and that'll be about it. So let's move over to the back window and I'll show you how I reuse uh, the paper I used when I was spraying the black. Okay, you can see right here, I reused the paper I used uh, that was on the uh, outside facing in when I sprayed the black on the interior. And I have um, the windshield and I've got the other three windows here. So what we're going to do is, that there's nothing wrong with this paper and these are kind of odd shapes. So it's not like there's glass in the car where you can easily mask it and just redo it. So when you have the, you know, everything out, um, it really comes in handy to reuse these. I made the template, already made these. so. This was facing this way, just like that when I painted. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and right at this black line here, actually a little bit in from it, I'm gonna trim all that tape off that we already used. It's not like you can just turn around and stick it right back on. So I'm gonna take the scissors and I'm just gonna trim all the way around there. And then all we have to do, this was facing this way before. All we're gonna do is turn it around and then stick it on just like this. So we're gonna take tape and mask it from the backside on this nice brand new painted lip and have it stick up. And then all we're gonna do is stick this right on here. So let me cut, the, cut this excess off here and then we'll get right to it. Okay, we got the tape on all the way around. I've got it pushed on really nice. I'll go ahead and run my hand around there, make sure everything's stuck on real nice. And we'll double check all that before we, uh, before we actually start spraying any color or clear. So uh, I got the piece of paper. It was facing this way. We're just gonna reverse it. And the hardest part on this is just getting started, you know, finding your spot where, you know, you trim some of that off and you don't obviously don't want it sticking over onto the unpainted primer here. So we want it just stuck just up there. And then once you get it started, then it's a lot easier. So we're going to go hit it right there, right along here. Now I'm just going to push lightly with my hand, and then I'm going to get it up there. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll just kind of pinch it uh, onto the blue by running my hand up underneath here. And we're going to get that sealed up. And once you get one spot, 
stuck real well, then it gets a lot easier. And this is how I did it when I actually made this paper. If you guys recall when I was uh, getting ready to paint the black, I just held a piece of paper up there and took a Sharpie from the back side or the, this side and then just took scissors and cut it, cut a little bit smaller and basically did the same thing. But I've already got this paper done. There's no harm in reusing it. It's not like I sanded it and got it all dirty or, um, you know, it's been damaged in some way. So I'm just going to go ahead and reuse it just to make my life a little bit easier and faster. And there's another added bonus. I plan on wet sanding this cab when it, uh, to color sand it. So um, I'm not going to unmask this. So actually when I'm painting, I'm going to put just color around here. But when I spray the clear, I'll actually put a coat of clear over the paper. Now this isn't waterproof paper. You can buy waterproof paper. I don't necessarily use it. But you can spray a, a just one quick coat of clear on here so when you're wet sanding, that water's not going to soak into that paper. It's just going to sheet right off. So it's already got some clear on it, so I'm actually a little bit farther ahead on that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stuck all the way around, and then we're going to tackle that little uh, vent opening. I'll show you how to, you know, uh, get something sealed off that you can't get into. Okay, for this, this opening right here, um, it'd be ideal if I had some two-inch tape, but I just looked, and I'm... Um, when I get close to the end of these projects, I start running out of everything in my drawer. So I'm going to use the one inch tape here. And what we're going to do is, since tape sticks to tape really well, uh, really easily, now uh, we can't get our hand back there and, you know, just tape it. So what we're going to do is we're going to tape the perimeter. And then we're going to uh, try to run tape this way. And then we'll use one piece of tape to seal it. So, you know, basically what you... Your, your number one thing is to make sure that there's stickiness sticking out on all four sides. So we're going to stick one up here. We're going to make sure that's stuck on there really good. We're going to push super hard. You want to really, really push hard on that tape to make sure it's, I mean, really force it down on there so you know it's on there really good. And we're going to do that on the bottom and then on the sides, and then we're going to put a piece in the middle to fill it. Now we have this piece here, that bracket covers most of that, but I still want uh, this exposed. The screws are going to get uh, painted, um, so we want to make sure that they're kind of exposed as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get this masked up, but really the trick is just to make sure that you get everything pushed on there real tight, because later we actually have to push on this tape to seal this up. So. Uh, you know, tape on tape, you know, when it co coils back on itself, it will, uh, it sticks and does not want to come apart. So, so I'll do the top and bottom first to make sure I've got a nice base before I start. And I'm going to get that pushed down super hard all the way around. And then I'll do the sides and then we'll fill it in. So I'll bring you back. Let me knock this out real quick and then I'll show you how we seal that up. Okay, as you can see, I've got it masked from the back in, and I actually cheated a little bit with a stir stick, reached through the, uh, through the hinge pocket here and pushed out and helped myself out, and I will do that here in a second again, but you can only reach down so far. So all the stickiness is facing out, so what I did was I made myself, it'd be a lot easier if I had some two-inch tape, so I've made myself a little wider strip here. And uh, this will stick to that real easy. So you don't have to get much pressure on it to seal it up. So we went around the, where the, the bracket attaches. Now, if this was flush, it'd be a lot easier. So I went around that. And so now I have to try to attach this to this curved part. It would be easy over here, but right here, it's going to be a little more difficult. So I'm going to kind of stick this on here. And it sticks real well to itself. A little short there. I'm going to have to double that one up. So now I'm going to uh, stick that down pretty good wherever I can reach with this stir stick. And put some pressure on it. And then I'm going to take the stir stick on the back side here and try to stick this line over here really good. And if you have one side stuck really well, then it makes it a lot easier on you because you can pull and tug on it and not worry about, uh, you know, pulling the whole thing away. So I'm going to try to get my finger in there and get this corner stuck down really well. 
And sometimes it's, uh, you know, you just have to do the best you can. Now that's stuck pretty good right there, but we still have that hole right there. So I'm gonna just kinda push on this. And by getting this taped around here, now I can push and just kind of get that done. And now, now we have a void right there. So I'm going to take a piece of tape and we're just going to try to patch that in the best we can. Now the hardest part is getting it sticking to this side, not that side, because that side's the sticky part. So we're going to go ahead and get this tucked down inside there. And then just kind of rub it on there. And since we got the rest of it, it's kind of like a drum, you know, so you can put a little pressure on these and get them stuck down. Just like that. We got a little void right there. I'm going to put a little piece in. In between the multiple layers of tape, you should be able to seal that up. Now, uh, there could be a void there, but it's stuck somewhere else, so it can't, the vapor can't get through or the paint spray can't get through. So you just kind of have to you know, come, sometimes you have to pile it on a little bit to get what you want. But there we go. All sealed up. And I'm not going to put a bunch of pressure on there, but that's sealed up nice and tight. So it's just, uh, you know, you kind of figure these things out over the years. You guys probably already know a lot of this, but that's kind of how I do it, and it works out really well. Okay, we got the uh, windshield masked off. It's all done. And so one more thing before we seal off these door openings. Um, it's a little trick I started doing years ago, uh, eh, about five, six years ago, where I use uh, plastic wrap to protect painted pieces inside the car. Now, uh, it, let's say some clear vapor or mist or, you know, overspray gets inside the cab here, starts floating around. Now, chances are it's not going to settle in on the vertical surfaces. It's just going to fall to the bottom. But on this dash, it could settle in and then, you know, then I've got, you know, a problem. So if you just take some plain old plastic wrap, this happens to be saran wrap. Take a piece of this stuff and just lay it on here. It'll, this is fresh paint here, so it's going to want to, you know, kind of stick real nice. So we're just going to pull it over on here. And we're just going to lay it right up here. It's a little trick that could save you a lot of work later uh, on cleanup or polishing or whatever. Or if you've got parts laying around that you've already got done and you don't want them to get damaged. Now, I don't know how well you guys can see, but it sticks on here pretty good. doesn't leave any residue or anything. Now, this paint is, you know, weak or whatever old. So I'm not worried about, you know, you know sticking, sticking. But it just clings on there just like that. And uh, it does a great job. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this whole thing. Now, uh, cling wrap uh, has a little bit of stickiness to it. This is just plain, uh, this saran wrap. This is just regular, uh, you know, uh, plastic wrap. But cling wrap is a little stickier. And it may, uh, I've never used it, uh, but I don't think it would leave residue. But it would work excellent for this type of thing too because you could wrap it up underneath here and it'd, it'd tr try to stay. I'm going to wrap it up underneath here and just put a few pieces of tape on it. But this is a little trick, so, you know, just sneak into the kitchen where your wife's not looking, grab her plastic wrap and go out in the shop and just make sure you put it back when you're done. So give it a try. Uh, I'll tell you, it saved me a lot of work, uh, you know, over the years. So uh, just a little tip for you. Let's, uh, let me finish this up and we're going to tackle these door openings. Okay, we got uh, the plastic uh, wrap on the dash real nice. It's uh, covered all the way up underneath, so we should be good there. And uh, so we're going to move on to the door opening. Now, I generally cover these uh, back in the day, you know, as a youngster. I used newspaper and just a ton of masking tape. Um, a lot of cars I painted, uh, the doors weren't off. I didn't do completes back then. We would just open the door, seal it up, and then, you know, paint the jam and close the door and paint the outside of the car. But uh, using plastic is so much better than paper for this particular instance. So uh, the plastic I use, you know, you see it at the home center. It's like you get three rolls for, you know, I don't know, three or four bucks. Um, I, I use the 0.7 mil plastic. It's just about the right weight. Don't get the half mil or the 0.3 mil. That stuff is just, uh, you know, it'll frustrate you just trying to get it unfolded. This is just about right. It's got enough, enough weight uh, so you can handle it easily, but not so much weight that it's actually pulling on your tape. Because if you use like, you know, heavy duty Visqueen, um, it, 
the, just the weight of it will pull on your tape. So you want something that seals real nice, has a little bit of give to it, it's easy to handle, and it's cheap. So uh, that's what I use, 0.7, works well for me. And before I undo it, I, I unrolled that, and I held it across here, and then I cut with the scissors. So um, if you guys don't have scissors in your shop, your garage, or whatever, get a pair. I think these, uh, these are Frisca, or Fiskas. Um, I got from Home De uh, Walmart. I think I got them from Walmart for like 15 bucks. So uh, get a pair, keep them in your shop or your garage, come in really handy, especially when you're masking. So um, you want your plastic, it's better to have it a little too big and sag in than you know, cut it too short and then you're trying to stretch it over and it's not gonna work. Um, and that's another thing I wanna bring up. Masking tape does not stretch. So if you put a, a stretch on it when you're taping, if you pull and really put it down, it's gonna fail on you. So it's better to pucker masking tape. You can pucker it all you want, go around corners, but if you try to stretch it, you're gonna get it on there, you're gonna think you're good, and then you know an hour later you're gonna come back and you're gonna see the edges has rolled up or the whole thing's just pulled loose and it's just flapping there. It's because that tension wanted to try to release itself and it'll release it over a longer distance and it'll actually just slowly slide uh, along there until it pops off and then you're gonna have a leak when you're painting. So uh, try not to stretch your tape. Uh, it'll, it'll save you some headaches down the line. So what we're gonna do here is I cut this to width. Now these rolls, uh, I think it's uh, nine feet by 12 feet. So I think uh, a cross ways is nine feet. So I've got the width. So this way I'm gonna have nine feet, which if this is four and a half feet, I can cut this in half and do both uh, door openings with one piece, but it doesn't matter, this stuff's super cheap. So I'm gonna unroll this, and I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda hold it up here with magnets and try my best to mark with a Sharpie the shape of it and then just cut it with scissors. Now, in the old days, I used to just fold it over and stick it on the tape and then have flappy parts sticking out here um, and then have to tape those down or trim them back. And that works either way. I may end up doing it this time. But if I can trim it up and uh, save myself a little bit of that, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. So let me get this unfolded, kind of held up here with some magnets and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so I just got a couple of magnets holding up here and I've got this, the edge of this about lined up with the edge of the doorway here. So, uh, you know, I'm just trying to reduce some of the cutting I have to do. So I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm just gonna follow along. If you guys ever done any uh, window tinning, it's kind of the same idea where they lay it up and mark it from the outside and then cut it for the inside. So we're just gonna kind of hold it on here. It's a little breezy outside so the wind's blowing this uh, plastic around and I'm just going to bring that over and then we're just going to trim that off. So by doing that it just saves me a little bit of this extra here. Now the bottom what I'll do is I'll start at the top and I'll tape my way down and you you always want to leave yourself extra like I said earlier. Make sure you have extra here because you'll start taping thinking you got plenty and then you'll come over here and you'll be like you know you'll have like a drum across here and you don't want that. It's you want it you know uh, you know tight ish but uh, it's better to have it flopping around just a little bit than have it, uh, you know, too tight. And then you guys have to, you have to put another piece on. You can always bunch it up with some tape and pull it a little tight once you're done. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this trimmed real quick. And then uh, we're going to start taping the back sides with the sticky part out. And then we're going to see if we can uh, just kind of stick this up and get the top set. Once you get the top set, then you're pretty good. Then you can just kind of run down the middle. And to get that done, you can reach through, but we're actually gonna cut a slice right down the middle here so we can get our arm in, and then we'll just seal that, uh, seal that up with tape later because the tape sticks to the stuff excellently. Okay, so I have the tape uh, stuck all the way around, facing out, so the sticky side's out. And on the corners where I kind of went around the corner, you wanna pre-bunch uh, that. So it's kind of bunched up and it's you know not laying flat. So you, before you put the plastic on, you wanna make sure you go through and kind of pinch those together so it lays flat. So you kind of pucker it up and then stick it to itself. Uh, the reason you do that is because if you do it while you're putting the plastic on, the plastic could get in between there and it's not gonna be a seal, tight seal. So uh, it, it could get into the fold and then uh, when you pull it tight, it's gonna have a little hole right there and then you know the paint's gonna get through and then you're gonna have problems on the inside. So let me, uh, let me see if I can get this stuck up here without getting mad. This can get frustrating at times. 
So, and the wind is blowing outside, so I probably need to close the shop door, but I won't. Um, so, uh, getting it stuck first is the hardest part. So, I'm going to come over here with this corner and just try to, and this stuff sticks to this tape super well. I mean, just poke it on there just a little bit with your finger and it'll stay. So, that's the beauty of this plastic. And so, then I'm just going to kind of go along and get the top first and try to get that plastic up on there and try to keep it from being folded because you don't want it folded over. You want it just the, just the cut edge sticking to the tape. Then you can wrinkle it a little bit or whatever you need to do. There we go. Well, I did that without getting mad. How about that? Lucked out. So then I'll just run my hand along there while I can still reach and stick that together. And if I pull on that, you can see I'm pulling really hard. It ain't coming off. So uh, this plastic sticks really well to this tape. So I'm going to go ahead and run down the side all the way down and around, and then I'll bring you back. I haven't taped the bottom yet. Uh, the reason I haven't taped the bottom yet is because this plastic's going to fall down there and it sticks so well to the tape. Uh, it's, it's just going to get stuck and I'm going to have to tear it off there. So you always want to leave that for last. Kind of cut your plastic long and let it hang past the door so it's, its own weight is actually helping you out a little bit. And then you can kind of just inch your way down the sides. I'll probably do this side first because it's the weird shape and then the other one's going to lay just flat so it should be a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And then I'll do that side, reaching up underneath as I go to stick it down. And then uh, we'll keep that slit we need to cut in here to reach through and fix anything uh, very small. So then, because then we have to kind of just stick tape on that to seal it up. So let me get this side right here and then we'll get that and we'll finish up the bottom. Okay, all done. So you see it's stuck up here pretty good. Anywhere where I was a little short or I wasn't sure, I went ahead and stuck tape on this side, sticking it to the sticky part and then to the plastic. And you guys can see it's on there pretty good. So it's not, uh, it's not coming loose. So it's, it's stuck. And I've had a lot of experience doing this, so I know it's going to stick. So we come down here, and I didn't have to put a slit in it after all. Uh, and it's not a big deal if you do, though. So you just put a slit uh, somewhere up, you know, up here so you can reach your arm in. And then once you seal it up, it's not like you're spraying paint right on this spot. Now, if you were to put a slit down here and then have to seal it up, that's a problem. But if you go up here and put yourself a little slit, just enough to get your arm in, get in there, and then squish that tape down, then you'll be fine. So over here, I got some tape that's not sticking so well. I'll, uh, I may have to put a slit in it after all. Now, obviously, the other side isn't done yet, so I could, you know, have somebody come over and help me or try to get Jake to go in there and put his paw right there, and I could push on that real hard. But we're, we're doing really well. My line along here, what I did, I just let that that plastic lay right there and I took the sharpie and I put a line across there and I told you guys to give yourself some extra and what I do I cut right on the line instead of give myself some extra so I had a little patch job over here where it was a little short I had to pull it tight you can tell it's a little tight right there but it's looking good all the way around so this thing is masked off this side is masked and ready to ready to go I've got the other side yet to do and that one uh, hopefully uh, it'll go just as good as this one did and then uh, if not, then I'll cut a slit in it, reach my arm around and do what I need to do and then seal the slit back up. But uh, one caveat, do not leave your tools inside the car, or the truck or whatever, your tape, your scissors, your paper and all that kind of stuff. I've done that before where I've sealed something I needed when I was painting inside the car. And then I'm like, uh, crap, I either had to go buy a new one, cut a hole in my masking and then reach in and grab it and then seal it back up. So. Uh, I've done it a couple of times. It's kind of a uh, kind of stupid thing to do, but I've done it. So all in all, this is looking really good. And uh, we're almost done with this uh, masking off this cab. Okay, before we wrap up this video for the day, I want to uh, thank everybody that sent in pics uh, of their projects. I love what, I love what, seeing what you guys are doing. And kind of envious, uh, you know, I've seen rotisseries, uh, you know, two posts, four post lifts. That's stuff I don't even have. So you guys are doing an awesome job, but you know, I got over, uh, you know, 700 subscribers and I'm only, you know, only got about 20 different people sending me pictures. So come on guys, send in what you're doing. I don't care what you're doing. You putting a fountain in the backyard, pouring concrete, send it in. I'd love to see what you guys are up to. You know, it's always interesting uh, interacting with car guys and gals. 
you know, there's a lot of women out there doing a lot of cool stuff. So send in your pics. I'd love to see it. I want to post it at the end of the video so everybody else can see what we're up to. I'd like just everybody to, you know, kind of share what they're doing. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And mash that bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a new video. We'll see you on the next one. We're getting close to color and clear. Mm -hmm.